What's up, everybody? My name is Malik Atala, and today is episode three of my Charles Manson series. I just want to thank everyone for viewing these videos, and I want to say that um, I don't have to use a piece of paper and read from it during these videos. I do know all of the history, the sequence of events, but it's just for reminder. So last time we left off where Squeaky Fromm was on a bench in Venice, California, and Charles Manson came up in a bus to pick her up along the way. Manson said he is spiritually allied with the scorpion and the wolf. Later, when he was incarcerated, he would make dolls out of string to pass the time, thinking about his family. He's allied with certain awarenesses of the desert. In his own words, I come from the heart of Ben Crosby, Frank Sinatra, Tom Mix, Roosevelt. I come from the hills of Kentucky, hard times, baloney for Sunday dinner. He came from the depression. All the discharged men of the Second World War raised Manson as a child in prison. To recap his mentality while inside Terminal Island, he knew what was going on out in society and the Beatles were the epitome of what he craved. Fame, power, women throwing themselves, all the money you could imagine. So he wrote many songs in prison to appear and make impressions once he got out. He picked up many skills while in prison to prepare himself to thrive as a criminal after his release. Um, he learned from Dale Carnegie's How to Make Friends and Influence People. Quote from that is, if you wanna be liked instantly, do as a puppy does, become genuinely interested in other people and show it. Once Manson got out in the new thriving culture of peace, love and brotherhood, he used the, the powerful draw to make friends. He said that all he wanted was the little girls. I'm just chasing the little girls around. I don't have no thought in my mind. Manson's talent was that he recruited very young girls, very impressionable at a time in their lives where they had identity problems, didn't know where they were going. So let's go back to the first girl that old Charlie boy sucked into his world. <laughs> um, it was, the first was Mary Bruner. He eventually moved into her apartment and according to records, they, they would have parties at 636 Cole Street in San Francisco. Manson would play his guitar and sing to all the girls that were present. One time with Mary, he was on LSD and he was laying on a bed tripping out. He said that he had a vision that, that he was being put on the cross and when he was laying his, and he was laying his life down to save the world again. He would compare himself to Christ frequently and he was a man of a thousand faces. He was what anyone wanted him to be. If someone was looking for a Christ-like figure, he would become that. Same with a father figure. He'd pick up on what others were looking for and became what they needed. He was the ultimate con man. Manson met Patricia Krenwinkel at a party that her sister threw. He had, he had come by with a friend of his from prison. They were at a house in Malibu and Manson was playing his guitar and singing. Krenwinkel was already working for an insurance company at that time, but always never had direction of who she was or where she was going in life. She wanted to feel safe, like someone was going to care for her. That's what she really wanted and she was missing. Manson came up to her and asked her what to come with him to a bedroom. He had insecure, she had insecurity issues and had overt problem with body hair. Um, while in the bedroom, Charlie said, take off all your clothes and look in the mirror. I want you to see how beautiful you are. And after that, she was his. They made love that night and she, he kept saying how beautiful she was. And she just couldn't believe that. She started crying and crying. He took advantage of that youthful innocence, but more importantly, he told her what she wanted to hear about herself, which was the key to, to get his followers and appeal to them. It was so simple. He told people what they wanted to hear about themselves. Patricia Krenwinkel was from Los Angeles and was born December 3rd, 1947. Her father was an insurance salesman and her mother a homemaker. As a child, she went to dancing school. She took swimming lessons. And as a family, they all went to church with her parents. She was good in school and never had any trouble. Growing up, 
her parents were silent and did not openly talk about their problems ever in the household. Never argue. Uh, uh, Patricia Krenwinkel had a sister that was seven years older than her. Her name was Charlene. She was determined and she was deemed incorrigible about the time she was four or five. She grew up with mental health issues and was actually a half sister. She gotten into drugs heavily and had a child by 15. In, in their silent household, Patricia gravitated and got closer to her sister because she would talk to her more often than her parents. Her parents were working out a separation at the time. Her sister told her things she wanted to know. And, I, and she, as she went to school, she never felt like she fitted in. So she got closer to a sister that was on a road for her own destruction. She introduced Patty to drugs and LSD was the was prevalent at that time in the late 60s. It was the drug of choice. They threw parties and drank. Her sister used pills and tried suicide. At this time, at this time, Krenwinkel lost, Kren, Krenwinkel was lost and had no sense of direction of where she was going, who she was or what she wanted to do. She was thinking there has to be more. There has to be a way out. She was 19 at the time, and that's when she fell in with Charles Manson. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I'll see you in the next one.